Hello everyone and welcome to the newest episode of the Read Right to Left podcast. I, as always, am G, joined by my always wonderful co-host Ray from Whimsical Pictures. Hi guys. And this month, March, can you believe it? We're already so far into the year. We, (laughs) the, the two of us are going to be talking about popular, famous, infamous, uh, divisive mangaka group, Clamp. But before we jump into questions and before we get into the specifics of who Clamp are and what they've done, just a reminder, you can find this podcast on all of your major podcasting platforms, most notably Spotify, Google Podcasts, uh, Apple Podcasts. And if you do enjoy this series, please be sure to rate and or review. You can also follow the podcast on my YouTube channel, Simply G. That's simply G double E. Um, And links to both of our socials will be in the description as per usual. But Ray, Mm -hmm. (laughs) clamp. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Clamp, clamp, clamp. Everyone's got an opinion. You know? Mm -hmm. Um... They they are surely one of those groups that you either love or hate. There's not too many people who are just kind of indifferent to Clamp. Yeah. Uh, so Clamp is, as I'm sure most people listening would already know, um, a group of four women, uh, mangaka, who make... They basically... Like, their stuff is very versatile. It spans mm-hmm. pretty much every genre that you can find manga in, right? Um, they've done shonen, they've done seinen, they've done um, jose, they've done shoujo, they've done yuri, they've done bl. Oh boy, have they done bl. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, their stuff also, it, it has a very distinctive voice and distinctive style, but it has a few different distinctive styles. Um, there's mm-hmm. very concrete eras within their art that can be pinpointed. Usually, if you look into the backgrounds of the series, this has to do with uh, who happens to be in charge of the art for that particular mm-hmm. series because they do rotate around their members' roles. Um, but I'm not the person to ask about, like, you know, who was in charge of which particular series of art versus writing mm. or whatever. Um, and I don't think you are either, G. <laughs> no, no, certainly not. Do not ask me. <laughs> um, I am far from the expert on this group. You've come to the wrong podcast for that. <laughs> <laughs> but just like assholes... Everybody has an opinion on Clamp, and the two of us are no exception, so uh, we thought that we would uh, talk about the various Clamp series that we have encountered over Mm -hmm. the course of our manga reading career. (laughs) And with that, I think that perfectly segues into our questions thank you everyone who sent in we got so many so many questions this (laughs) month which is fantastic um and i think from that we have a couple people um asking what your our first clamp manga was uh thank you at zakasa underscore 2049 as well as at storied on shelves um, who both asked that question. Mm-hmm. What about for you, Ray? How did you discover Clamp? What was your first uh, foray into their work? I s- seem to recall that I think, like, back in middle school, I have a vague recollection of trying to read Card Captor Sakura from the library. Mm-hmm. Um, Back when the only series I was really reading were, like, I think Fruits Basket, Plus Anima, and Um, (laughs) Yu-Gi-Oh! And I couldn't. I didn't realize that there was a difference between the two types of covers in the old 
uh, editions of Card Capture Sakura, so I ended up picking up the mm-hmm. sequel first, and I had no idea what was <laughs> happening. Um, and I had to read them out of order because the library never had very many of them, because um, mm-hmm. they were always out. So I gave up on that yeah. venture. <laughs> that was my first foray into Clamp, and it was a failure. But mm-hmm. the first series that I read zealously, beginning to end, uh, mm-hmm. as it was coming out, was uh, in my high school library, we had two Clamp series. And one of them mm-hmm. was Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicles, and yeah. the other one was Holic. Um, mm-hmm. I read Holic later once I realized that it crossed over with Tsubasa. Um, mm-hmm. I read Tsubasa first, and that was one of my first like obsessions within manga. I was mm-hmm. so into Tsubasa. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it so much. Um, I think there's a lot of people who can relate to that. Um, Yes. It's yeah. it's got a good especially the early volumes have a good sense of just like classic like middle grade adventure vibes um mm-hmm. with them hopping through different worlds and you've got like this fun little central party of characters um you're sort of genre hopping with each couple of volumes, each arc. Mm-hmm. Uh which of course at the time I had no idea that we were actually like genre hopping through different clamp series <laughs> but, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but you know you don't really need at least okay for the first few volumes of Tsubasa you do yes. not need context from other clamp series <laughs> mm-hmm. eventually you do and that's where I kind of it kind of lost me but <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but for like a good 20 volumes or so that was my shit it was exactly what i was looking for when i was 15 i was so (laughs) so on the tsubasa train (laughs) what about you g uh so funnily enough i have kind of a similar uh timeline as you did Uh, when i started high school which is kind of roughly equivalent to middle school in the US Mm -hmm. um I used to visit not my school library but the local library to where I lived uh I used to take the bus home from school and then it would drop me off kind of right near where the library was so I'd hang out there Mm -hmm. uh, before I had to walk home and a uh, big big nerd that I was I would always hang out and get books um but when I I would always foray into the comic section I wasn't really that this was even prior to me like being an anime fan so I really didn't know much if anything about manga uh but one of the com- this is such a weird starting point uh <laughs> One of the comics there Mm -hmm. was Tokyo Pop's edition Mm -hmm. of uh, Shirahimeso, or the Snow Goddess Tales, um, which is like a single volume, and it's just a collection of, you know, stories about very, like, the Snow Goddess. I didn't... Like, I read it, but I don't think, like, first of all, I don't think I read it correctly. I, again, wasn't used to manga. I don't think, I don't think I read it backwards, but I also don't think I read it right, you know? Um, It's hard to tell how to read those speech bubbles when you're first getting into it. Yes, exactly. And again, keep in mind, I was like 14. So I was like, what is, I don't, this is my first my first real like manga quote unquote experience is <laughs> it's a very strange very strange thing i was like that was weird i didn't borrow it i read it in the library and was like mm-hmm. oh okay and <laughs> didn't like it very much because i was very confused <laughs> and maybe if i read it now i'd be less confused <laughs> but but then again it is clamp um, so <laughs> exactly so who knows it could have just been that it was meant to be that way um (laughs) and having read more clamps since then i'm not entirely convinced it was my inexperience that led to that (laughs) (laughs) so read that was like that was weird um and then just kind of disregarded it 
got went on with my life. Mm -hmm. Jump to a couple years later, I'm getting into anime um, through like other different various means. Um, and one of the earlier titles that I was watching was a series that was very popular at the time coming out in English, Holic. Mm -hmm. um, so I watched that, really loved it. Um, I was aware that it like crossed over with Subasa because that like they were both coming out at the same time. The anime, at least in English, were coming out at the same time. That was a big part of the publishing push. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I I really enjoyed Holic. I didn't get to Subasa the anime till way later, but similarly, Subasa was one of those titles that like I was aware that my not only my local library but my school library had volumes of i don't know if they had like all the i never went to my school library for manga i was too self-conscious for that <laughs> but i was aware that they had them because sometimes they'd be on display um and i think there might have been a couple of volumes of holic but i didn't properly get into like trying clamp manga until very recently um over the covid like lockdown period w come some of my local libraries here um there's this clamp is still ubiquitous in mm -hmm. saying that i had a hard time tracking anything down because a lot of uh their older titles are or, or ones with multiple volumes certain volumes have gone out of print libraries aren't quite up to date in the same way that they were when you and i were 15 right <laughs> um but i through my library system you know a handful of years ago i was able to read the entirety of card capture sakura i read uh, rig veda mm -hmm. i read clover I read Legal Drug and Drug and Drop, and uh, since uh, since then I actually own have read and own all of Holic. I've also seen the Subasa anime. I haven't dived into that one yet because I know that it's just a bit of a mess. <laughs> um, so yes, it my my foray. I was always aware of like clamp being this big thing, but I don't have any childhood nostalgia for things like card capture Sakura or any of their more popular even stuff like Angelic Layer, which has popular anime and stuff like that. Um, so I am a very casual. I don't want to say fan because I'm not really a fan. Oh, Kobato I read from the library as well, and I have opinions on that one, but <laughs> we'll save it for later. <laughs> and Ray Earth. I've read a lot of clamp manga, I have to say, in the last three years, and I I can't say that I've liked most of them. So, <laughs> so yeah. but we will wait. We will wait to get to that. Yeah, if we want to, like, go through the quick rundown of what I've read, um, most of it is not recent. <laughs> this is all, like, I was, I had my clamp phase in mm -hmm. high school, <laughs> right? So, <laughs> yes, um, yeah. I have read, obviously, Tsubasa and Holic, and I've read, um, Chobits, uh, multiple mm -hmm. times I've read Wish. Um, that was the old translation that I read, so not the new one. Mm. Um, I've read, like, half of Kobato. Um, what else have I read? Oh, I've read Clover. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, and, like, bits and pieces of other things, you know? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. those are the ones that I've read in full and remember. <laughs> so well, there's a stories on shelves had kind of a follow up question to that first series, um, in the second part of their questions of Do you think 
the starting that starting point of where you did influence how you saw the different universes or their series in general, how they weave this larger universe or multiverse, I guess, in a way. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you feel, G? Um, again, I started at a really weird place, uh, but if we disregard my, my <laughs> first attempt, um, <laughs> I've coming into clamp or being aware of clamp, um, as kind of an older person and also with this pre-existing history i knew that there was this multiverse or or universe jumping aspect to it um i don't avoid spoilers for a lot of things especially if i don't think i'm going to get to them um so it was not a surprise that all of these things cross over i find a lot of the crossover stuff and universe jumping and all of that very convoluted and i for one um but also i find it very much like obviously it's fan service right like it's for pre-existing fans who will mm -hmm. get the reference um and that's fine and it's fun but when you start building series like entirely on that premise mm -hmm. that's when their issues start to pop up which is why stuff like card capture sakura or even um holic can stand on their own pretty well there's some things in hot like later on that you're like okay you probably do need a little bit of context to under to get the full picture but on its own it's still a very well done story um but when yeah subasa <laughs> when you start ending up with like 14 different storylines that you have to have the background on. Look. It feels more See, the like thing is, a... <laughs> anytime that you are having a meeting with your cohorts uh, to discuss where you're taking your story, and the words time travel and clones both come up, you, <laughs> you need to take a few steps back. <laughs> you need to take a deep breath, <laughs> step back, and say, hmm. Hmm. Um, what if there so... were 14 Sakuras? <laughs> <laughs> what if every main character was just Sakura, but in just a little bit different, but kind of the same, but actually the same? Yeah, oh, it's just, I don't know. It does my head in. I'm not a fan of it. I can, I don't have an issue with winks and nods to like existing works i don't even have an issue with like reusing carrot like i honestly in saying that i don't have an issue with crossover stuff or like things that deal with multiple versions like i i'm not a fate fan or a nasuverse fan but it's far more easy to follow for the most part compared mm -hmm. to clamp and so yeah, I've I've enjoyed and and dealt with other series that have wide spanning multiple spin-offs and they're all kind of related and not <laughs> related. Um Clamp and again, I'm saying this as someone who doesn't have a nostalgia for them, who's read some of, well, I've read a lot of their stuff, not <laughs> all of their tentpole stuff, but I am aware of the storylines for all of those things. I don't have the fondness for some of these characters that obviously longtime fans do, which again is just that's neither here nor there. I don't think that all of the universe jumping, all of the clone elements, all of the like everyone is tied together, except for Rig Veda, we forget that exists. Um, <laughs> but everything else is interwoven in this grand story mm. of universes and characters is <laughs> just it gets too big for what their i don't want to say their writing ability but like kind of their <laughs> but like writing kind of ability though, can handle. to be honest <laughs> yes um yeah i think we both have uh controversial opinions about <laughs> the quality <laughs> of their writing <laughs> consistently 
Um, uh, yeah. Controversial but not unpopular takes, I would say. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So for me, I started with Tsubasa, and I started without mm-hmm. knowing that it was, like, this big crossover thing. Except for, mm-hmm. like, in the Del Rey, like, translator <laughs> notes, they were like, there's this, like, clamp star system thing going on. And I'm like, I don't know what any of that means. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and right, it sounds good. <laughs> I eventually knew from the translator notes that it crossed over with Holic. So, like, mm-hmm. I read that, too. But I was, like, full in a way, like, super into Tsugasa and only, like, kind of into mm. Holic. Which is funny because now I'm like the inverse, but um, in. yeah, <laughs> um, all in and holic. <laughs> but I do have you know a certain amount of nostalgia attached to Tsubasa, mm-hmm. um, and I think that my relationship with Clamp is a weird one specifically because I started with like the big medley <laughs> of yes. all of their works. <laughs> It's like, I kind of, like, know all of these worlds and characters as they appear in Tsubasa, but Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily, or, like, I would have found out about, like, say, what Sakura and Shaoran in Cardcaptor Sakura are actually like, like, much, Mm -hmm. much later. Um, I Mm -hmm. didn't have, to me, Sakura and Shaoran were the main characters of Tsubasa. I wasn't going into Tsubasa yes, yeah. like, oh, this is the card capture soccer characters. If they were older, that's mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. I was like, no, those are the main characters of Tsubasa. I didn't know about card capture soccer or any of this stuff. <laughs> um, so, like, yeah, I think it affected it a lot. Um, looking back now, knowing what I do now, I mean, for me, it's also the same as G. I just find it mostly pretty tiresome. (laughs) Um, I don't mind, like, multiverses. I just watched Everything Mm -hmm. Everywhere all at once, finally, and it slapped (laughs) so much. Best Um, movie. Love that film. (laughs) Cried. Every accolade. Cried a lot. Um, You know... I, I like the Tezuka star system stuff. It's cute when, like, you know, these mm-hmm. little side characters show up as Easter eggs in other series. Um, you know, I read a lot of creators who do that. A lot of mangaka do that. But it's like when you start... <sighs> when you start being, like... Honestly, <laughs> I'm thinking <laughs> of, like... <laughs> I'm thinking of, like, so, um, I teach, like, elementary middle schoolers, and one of the book series that I grew up on that my kids love now is, like, the Percy Jackson stuff or whatever, um, and, like, I still, you know, I catch up with those, I read those, I read the little spinoff series and everything, uh, the thing that makes those work where (laughs) Clamp Star System doesn't, because, you see... (laughs) Percy Jackson is premised on the idea that all of the mythologies everywhere are just true all at once. (laughs) And it doesn't make any sense at all. But it's like whenever someone talks about it and like asks about it, the other characters just go, oh, don't think about it too hard. And they move on with their fucking day. Yes, yeah. (laughs) When we start trying to come up with lore and mechanics for how all of your universes are true at once, then mm-hmm. we start having clones and time travel at the same time, <laughs> <laughs> and 15 showruns. And, you know, I just... Also, there's the fact that we'll get into Clamp's artwork. Um, I yeah. think... I guess I'm not too aware of your opinion on their art but for me like I always think it's beautiful like I I like Mm -hmm. looking at their art aesthetically it's pretty but um (laughs) in terms of like its success as like comic book art yes yeah sequential art (laughs) it's hard uh... to tell what's happening a lot of the time and like 
There are artists that I could give you the names of who could probably handle or who have handled clone related stories quite mm-hmm. well. Um Clamp particularly in the Tsubasa era of their art which people affectionately refer to as like the noodle people era. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um everyone's about 20 heads tall. Um It it doesn't matter which characters they are or if they're meant to be clones or not, they all look the same. <laughs> yes, yeah. Uh just different wigs, right? Different wigs on the same base. <laughs> um <laughs> And that would be fine if we were just doing, like, a classic adventure story like we started out with. You Mm -hmm. know, especially because Clamp loves their, like, costume design, so everyone has, like, their own individual, like, super elaborate costume. So it's fine. I can tell people apart. Yeah. You start bringing in clones, and I'm like, I don't know which one's the evil clone. I don't know which one's the vampire. I don't know which one's, like, the card captor Sakura one. I don't know which one's the other card captor Sakura one. <laughs> I have no idea. And there's been no attempt here to differentiate all of these clones from each other. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, Yeah. So I got so annoyed. And then Fi and his stupid twin. (laughs) Mm. And I have to suddenly be able to tell these two assholes apart. And I can't tell them (laughs) apart either. (laughs) Even though one of them has an eye patch after a while. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I still can't tell who's who. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Um, anyway, that's my... (laughs) <laughs> that got pretty spicy, but that's my hot take. Well, <laughs> it's. I feel like uh, well, I agree with the, that hot take. I feel like, especially latter Subasa, and again, I can't speak to the entirety of the manga. I haven't sat down and read it, um, mm. and I'm not that motivated to. One day I'll get there, but you know, it, until then, um, it feels. A lot of this, like, universe jumping and clones and twins and alternate versions of yourself and all of this feels like a telenovela, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Like, there's always got to be some big twist and someone doing something even more evil. And just when you think (laughs) that things are, you know, fine and we've defeated evil, there's something else big happening. You're just like, oh my god. Oh my god, please let me rest. Um, like, the last I'm good decision a... y'all made was making the gay guys, like, gay vampires together. This is... <laughs> <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's just a lot. Um, and I can understand fans who, like, really enjoy that aspect of, you know, all of this be seeing the red you know the strings align and all of this stuff you know piecing the the larger puzzle together but at some point i feel like clamp forgot their the plot. own <laughs> plot and connections of all of these characters and they said so they just continue to pull stuff out of thin air and expect the readers fans and and non-fans alike to just kind of roll with it without ever kind of questioning how we got here. Right? <laughs> why why are we here? Why Where are, are we? we? Here? Where are we? <laughs> uh, so, you know, I I don't I agree with you as well on the art. I, there's probably a, a, a couple questions about the art style. Clamp is a they are phenomenal at very high detail beautiful spreads they don't i don't think they do movement well in Mm -hmm. comics it's very like you said very hard to tell who's Mm. who action is really hard to follow um it's just and especially action if you got two clones fighting and you're like (laughs) what's going on and then especially like tsubasa is like yeah. The whole style of it is so, mm-hmm. like, maximalist. 
which yes. I am a maximalist loving bitch, but like mm-hmm. everything, there's like so much like visual effects flying around beams and lightning and clouds and bubbles and whatever. And the mm-hmm. two, there's, you know, three clones fighting each other. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> Clamp, I'm so tired. It's my, it's my yes. one piece problem again, where it's like, it shouldn't take me five hours to get through a volume of this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the thing is, as well, is that, like, Subasa's probably a little bit different because they're also freaking info dumping, like, all of this crossover weird bullshit. But, like, Clover and a lot of, just a lot of their works, there, there will be situations where it's just, like, full info dump explaining mm-hmm. what's going on. And then also, There'll be entire volumes where, like, two sentences are said and Uh it's all just pretty pictures and aesthetic. And you're like, I don't really know what's going on, (laughs) but I'm I'm sure. Let's just roll with it. Clover, you know? It was... It's beautiful (laughs) to look at. Um, It was... I don't know a single thing that happened in it. <laughs> I, I know people Clamp are like there's a single thing that happened. Actually, <laughs> like the story is being told backwards. It's so experimental and genius and I'm like, "Okay. Cool. Right. I don't want to take that from you. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it." <laughs> I disagree. <laughs> it's just yeah, Clover is um is... I I put together a lot of art projects in college that, you know, I had a whole lot of ideas about, and they Mm. were just confused garbage, you know? (laughs) I don't want to say Clover was an an experience in boredom, but I do want to say that it was not worth reading (laughs) for me. Like, I just... It was. I'm just like okay. I it's one and it's a one chunky dark horse volume that I go. I'm just really happy that I've never, aside from Holic, I've never purchased any clamp titles for my collection <laughs> because that would have been a very expensive process. Um, and I don't think I would be very happy with that purchase <laughs> now. Um. But, oh, God. I and, do think the action uh, in like Chobits era stuff is a bit easier to follow where people mm. have more human Dis- proportions. Because <laughs> um, Chobits is kind of an in between, right? Mm-hmm. And it's definitely mm-hmm. them going for a more like mainstream anime style. Um, Something like Angelic Layer 2, which takes place in the mm-hmm. same world as Chobits. Um, I, you know, they can do movement okay, depending on who's in charge mm-hmm. of the art for a particular series, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. But Chobits has other problems that we'll get into later. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh, the many problems. Um, so, yeah, I think. We've kind of gone off course a little bit, but um, before we move on, uh, we'll continue with Stories on Shelves' questions of, is there a clamp universe or world you're particularly fond of? We've spoken a lot about stuff we haven't liked, <laughs> so is there anything, any world or version, uh, universe that you're particularly fond of from clamp? Um, one of them is definitely going to cross over with you, so I'll save that one mm-hmm. for a second. But, uh, this is all going to be Tsubasa, because I literally have so much, like, nostalgia attached to it. But, mm-hmm. again, like, some of those early worlds are really fun, and, like, I still remember them, even now. Um, I remember mm-hmm. the, like, the race car world, the, like, speed racer thing. Um... <laughs> I, even up to, like, I still remember Acid Tokyo, which is angsty and Chunibyo as fuck, but you know what? So <laughs> am I. So. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I have a lot of fond memories attached to that series, and, like, I like the Japan world that Kurogane is from. Um, mm-hmm. 
Yeah, there's a lot of things that I like in that series. Um, there's like a cafe world too, I think. That was cute. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it crosses over with Kobato. But um, yeah. <laughs> and then the other one that I'm really fond of, uh, this time with no real caveats, um, except where it crosses over with Tsugasa and gets messy, <laughs> <laughs> uh, is Holic. Um, Mm -hmm. I love the world of Holic. I love how it's drawn. This is, like, Holic, to me, is their best art. Like, far and away. They have, like, Mm -hmm. a very clear artistic vision for that series. I love the way that it sort of mimics, like, woodblock printing. Um, the sort of, like, lanky, heavy-lidded look on the characters really works for the type of story that it's telling. Um... Mm -hmm. And I just really enjoy that world and, you know, um, sucker for spooky yokai stories, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, Hol- Holic is my answer as well. Uh, like, th- there's there's no question that Holic is my favorite. Um, <laughs> this, this, the, and it's also one that obviously, in for me, I have most nostalgia for uh, being one of the first titles that I properly enjoyed from them, albeit through the anime, not the manga. Mm -hmm. Um, But from what I've read of the Holic verse, and I've enjoyed a couple of, or I've enjoyed kind of the overall, I like the original kind of world from Tsubasa. I thought that was, not that they spent a huge amount of time there, Mm -hmm. um, but where those versions of Sharon and Sakura are from. Yeah. Um, I always found that pretty, like, interesting. Again, I was aware of Tsubasa long before I watched it. Um, so when I did finally get to it, there was, like, I was aware that there was all of this jumping all over the place. I also find the card capture Sakura, like, the original universe, very sweet and you know like it's just kind of i i don't know it's kind of the low-key or modern day japan Mm quote-unquote um settings of uh, several of their works or Uh, current era japan i should say on that note um um, mm. i also really like wish i like the world there i think it's sweet Mm -hmm. and i like the sort of it it gets a little convoluted, but for the most part, I like the angel and demon lore. Um, mm-hmm. So, that one too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't speak to, like, the Chobits or Angelic Lair or, um, you know, some of their other titles. And I find, I do, this is more a question of their artistic styling I do find some of their more cute series quote unquote card capture Sakura the clear card as well Kobato a lot of that's just a bit too saccharine for me mm-hmm. um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. it's I'm just I just roll my eyes <laughs> whenever I'm like oh um i think that's why i took to wish more so than like Mm kobato because it has a bit more melancholy to it Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah (laughs) and i i haven't read it i do i do want to and this is again another question that we get later um i just it's impossible to find now (laughs) is um Tokyo Babylon and Mm -hmm. and um X I find I think like I'd vibe quite well with that series again Mm -hmm. because it's a little bit moodier it's less saccharine so story on shelves yeah asked what we haven't read yet uh personally uh modify the question to Mm -hmm. what haven't I read that I plan to because a lot of these Mm -hmm. I do not plan to read (laughs) (laughs) Um, and it's the same as Yuji. I want to read Tokyo Babylon and X. I think of mm-hmm. all their stuff, I'd probably vibe with that the most. So, yeah. And as, yeah. there's not really anything else that I'm like chomping at the bit to read. <laughs> if they continued drug and drop, 
I don't think it's an inherently good series, but I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed a lot of other series um, of theirs. I would give that one a shot. And I'll, as I said, I'll get to Subasa at some point, <laughs> but it's not a high priority. Mm -hmm. Having read all of Tsubasa, it really doesn't have to be a high priority. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so the last question from at Story Chelps is uh, related to the uh, star system again. And were there any connections between series that surprised you? Yeah, because I didn't realize that Tsubasa was like a, a mashup of everything <laughs> at first. So that was a real shock, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, for me, again, I came into Clamp with a very, very aware that like 90% of their stuff is crossover. Um, I... But in saying that, like, obviously some titles are more well-known from Clamp's library versus others. Um, whenever, and a, a good example of that is Legal Drug slash Drug and Drop, um, they do have quite a few, like, characters or that are featured in there or, like, storylines um, that are related to other other clamp manga um one of them being suki which i haven't read but that those characters are in that for a short like they're not featured um but they are shortly shown in that and i was like oh that's and at, <laughs> at the time i was like i know this is a reference to something but I don't know what it's a reference to because again, like the way you they feature, like oh, remember these characters? And as someone again who hasn't read everything, I'm like no, because I have no idea who they are. What am I supposed to be remembering? Um, there were characters from Suki, and I was like ew when I realized. Um, they also had the um. Is it drag and drop? Yeah, they also have the wish characters, which is nice. I do like I I haven't I don't remember. I might have read all of Wish. Um not through maybe through libraries. I don't remember. I I've read bits and pieces of Wish. I know how it ends. Um, <laughs> and I think well, yeah. I mean those two are probably the most memorable surprises for me, um, but I think that's also because not a lot of people are aware of legal drug slash drug and drop, and certainly um, nobody's like that nostalgic for something like Suki, so <laughs> <laughs> it's always it's, it's a bit of a surprise when you're like oh yes, this is, these are these characters, and like who is asking for these characters? <laughs> Name me one person I know. who is asking for these characters. A couple people who like Suki, I guess. Um. Well, that's their prerogative. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, we can get into um why we're dunking on Suki. <laughs> uh, <laughs> by going into at Sunlit Lakes question. Um. Mm. What do you think has aged the best about their work, and what has aged the worst? Um, this is a two-part question. Mm -hmm. So, oh, I guess I'll go ahead and read the second part right now, and we'll just answer both mm -hmm. of them. If you were to recommend something to a newbie, where should they start? So, mm -hmm. what has aged the best, and what has aged the worst? Uh, the stuff that's aged the worst... Well, they're connected, right? Um, these things <laughs> that come up a lot in discourse about Clamp. Um, mm -hmm. The horse made out of discs about Clamp. Uh, mm -hmm. So they have this very strong like thematic undercurrent through most of their works that love knows no bounds. Uh, which is all very sweet, and it's particularly nice when you see, you know, uh, 
gay characters and like non-binary characters show up Mm -hmm. in their work and you're like oh cool that's really ahead of its time but then Mm -hmm. it gets less cute when you've got you know a fourth grade teacher falling in love with a fourth grade student Mm -hmm. (laughs) or um let's say a human falling in love with his fembot Mm. Um, so it's like, you know, maybe love knows some bounds, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yeah, the the fated lover theme that Mm. is in all, all clamps. They love Um, that. Yes. Yeah, it's certainly the most problematic issue as i said it's in one way it facilitated this kind of frankness and ubiquitousness of queer relationships in their manga that were i don't want to say like not done but certainly not in a lot of the titles of the same popularity um of that era of manga and for a lot a lot of people especially in western manga and anime spaces that was the first time that they outside of maybe bl or yaoi however you want to say it Mm -hmm. um the first time that they'd seen a queer couple um portray and Mm -hmm. as main characters and you can't downplay the importance of that right Mm-hmm. But at the same time, <laughs> they as, kind of downplay as... it themselves by pulling all this yes. other crap. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, there's... It's like you're kind of proving everybody's stupid slippery slope fallacy. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's it's an issue that is in even some as Ray alluded to teacher student relationships are very much uh their style uh that not only in the the teacher and student um like characters of sakura's generation but her parents also were student teacher relationship um it's something that gets noted a lot and it's also prominently featured in suki Mm -hmm. um it's just oh it's just uh, it's not it you um mm-hmm. but yeah it's just the the age gap stuff and the portrayal of that in as this like fated beautiful thing mm-hmm. um in so many of their works not even just the student teacher stuff because like also one of my Kobato is the other one, right? Kobato, at the spoilers for this series, I, <laughs> it's been ten years, um, but Kobato like dies, quote unquote, at the end of the series, and then um, is reincarnated and comes back, you know, sixteen years later or whatever it is, as her new sixteen-year-old self, mm-hmm. and the dude from the same, you know, that she knew in her first version. Is still mm. waiting for her. And I'm like, ew, mm. you were already like older. You were already like 20 or 22 or whatever when you, she was 16 the first time. Now you are definitely too old for her, sir. Oh Stop. Uh. Stop. <laughs> Stop. Please Stop. do not. Um, but of course they do. And then that's, you know, and you're like, oh, you're meant to feel like, isn't it so beautiful that they no. have reconnected? No. And I'm like, this is not, <laughs> this is not beautiful. I do not want to read this. This is gross <laughs> and creepy and weird. Also, why has this kindergarten hired a 16 year old? I don't know. But we're, that's that's the least of the problems here. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's not good. Even Tokyo Babylon has this, like the the young young main character and the older fated mm-hmm. lover. 
Um, it just ha- so happens to be gay in that iteration. So again, I think people were a little bit more forgiving to that. That shouldn't be the case. Queer people can still be predatory, yeah. but when when people were like desperate, starved, for yes, any, starved for it, any kind of representation, positive representation, that kind of gets hand waved a little bit it's like well you know there's this faded love and blah 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 which is still just as bad but <laughs> yeah <laughs> no yeah. thank you <laughs> yeah and like speaking of the gay stuff um mm-hmm. i can't speak to like their really new stuff like gate seven or whatever um mm-hmm. it really new it's not it's not new anymore, <laughs> but you know, newer than the stuff I've read. Um, mm-hmm. But even up to something like Tsubasa, um, their portrayals of gay men are very strongly um, influenced mm-hmm. by the type of BL that was popular in the 90s and the aughts. Um, yes, yeah. So you have a very clear, like, top. Seme, who is, you know, mm-hmm. manly and big and tough and, <laughs> like, gruff and grumpy. And then you've got, like, the willowy, like, androgynous waif, like, bottom or uke. Um, mm. And this extends to relationships that aren't even necessarily gay. Uh, mm. Or, like, they're not necessarily male-male, like in Wish, yeah. um, where you have mm. a male character, human male character, and an angel who is non-binary, but very clearly portrayed to be that sort of, like, you know, androgynous, wayfish type of uke, right? Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're... <laughs> they're... They're not male-coded, they're uke-coded, right? Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um... They're so, bottom coded. Right? They're, they're bottom, bottom coded. coded. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> they are there to get it up the ass, and that's it. <laughs> um, and you know, it's nice. It's nice representation. Um, but it's that's probably not what they were thinking about, you know, <laughs> when they no. designed this character. Um, Kurgane and Fi are the same way. Um, mm-hmm. you know, the the brother and the friend from Cardcaptor Sakura, they're the same way. Yes, um, yeah. It's always the same way, and it's just, it's kind of, like, haven't we grown past this as a society? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> um, people, I feel like these days, a lot of the youngsters, they don't even realize how strictly strictly gender coded bl used to be (laughs) oh yeah absolutely um like it's hilarious to look at some of these things Mm. now but yeah it, it i feel like clamp maybe they have in their most recent stuff i can't speak to it but Mm. to the point where i've read their stuff it seemed like they never really even showed an interest in growing past that so yeah i mean i'll i'll just add to that in the list because uh drug and drop slash legal drug is exactly the same um again not that i've read it but x slash tokyo babylon exactly the same Mm -hmm. even waranuki and domaki from Mm -hmm. pollock exactly Mm -hmm. the same Mm -hmm. it's just it's a dynamic that was very of the era that they were writing in and when they were doujin artists but it's not something that is as one ubiquitous but two as accepted as just like well this is how it is um by fans anymore Mm -hmm. so yeah it's just it's just Um, tiring but i think we can all learn to love and accept um Jotaro and Kakyoin's Empreg Egg Baby. Egg Baby. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, the Egg Baby. (laughs) Uh, 
<laughs> um, <laughs> that's what you're here for, people. Ancient references. <laughs> to BL Dogens from the 90s. Um, anyway, uh, and then in terms of, like, the age gap stuff, uh, I'm gonna also add to that thinking of Chobits and Tsubasa specifically, but, like, there's other stuff, too. Is like, mm-hmm. the female character who has absolutely no fucking agency at all. Um, oh. and that's supposed to be cute and endearing and, like... Ugh. <laughs> um, yeah. this is certainly Gag. a big, huge aspect of Chi. She's heavily mm-hmm. infantil- infantilized throughout the series, and you can be like, oh, well, she gains more agency as the series goes along. No, she doesn't. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> especially, <laughs> not, especially not in the manga, where it's like, they go through this whole, like, you know, well, maybe she's, like, a real, genuine AI, something that people thought was impossible. But then at the end, the twist mm-hmm. is that, no, she's not. She's just a fucking robot. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. she can't think for herself. Real AI doesn't exist. The anime changes this and makes it so that she gets to turn basically human at the end. Because the people who made the Mm -hmm. the anime were like, oh wait, actually that's fucked up, never mind, we're gonna do something different. Um, No, Chobit's manga ends with like, nope, she's a hunk of metal, she's a computer. (laughs) With the bad end. Chobit's Um, has the bad end. (laughs) And it's just, yeah, beginning to end, she's super infantilized. Um, Sakura from Tsubasa, she's just Princess Aurora, basically. She doesn't Mm. do much. She sleeps a lot. Um, Has to be rescued. Um, You know, the female characters are there to look cute and wear pretty dresses and be carted around by all the pretty Mm -hmm. men. Most of the time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, uh, Holic does a little bit better with Himawari, but, like, not that much better. Yeah, I was gonna (laughs) say, aside from, like, Sakura in Cardcaptor Sakura, aside Mm -hmm. from Yuko in Holic, Holic. um, there might be a couple others that I'm not remembering right now. Uh, the girl from Angelic Lair, maybe. Um, mm, maybe characters, female characters who are like the main character, um, they normally have more agency, but any other kind of side female character, they're not getting anything done. <laughs> they absolutely need to be rescued. Uh, and even Sakura in, in Cardcaptor, mm-hmm. uh, certainly, certainly gets saved by Sharon a whole bunch, um, mm-hmm. which is fine but like also uh, yeah, but um, like also it's not though <laughs> it's not fine um <laughs> like of all the magical girl series in the world you could do better <laughs> yeah and even yuko like currently where the series is because she's disappeared and there's an implication that she needs to be rescued right like mm-hmm. i don't know it's just a weird thing to to be aware of because when you're reading or watching these things um some stuff is like very blatant you're like oh god this is even again Kobato I've not watched the anime so they may have changed this but she freaking oh my god her whole thing is like she needs to help people or give them happiness or something Mm-hmm. And she needs to do it, like, a hundred times to get all these stars to, like, become mm-hmm. an angel or whatever the hell it is. That I can't remember the story of Kobato <laughs> very much. Um, the, and then at the end, like, she do, she had, like, five successful attempts, right, out of, like, this six-volume series. She, mm-hmm. She'd gotten, like, ten stars, and then all of a sudden, at the end, she, like, did one big thing and got all the rest. And I'm pretty sure she someone had to help, like, say... She didn't do that on her own. She absolutely (laughs) didn't do that on her own. And I was like, oh, God, why are you so... Why are you like this? Um, So, yeah. You know, and again, Cardcaptor Sakura, she gets help from Yue and the 
little cur cur what's the curry? Is that the little lion thing? Mokuna? Oh no. No, no, no Kiro. Mokuna. Kiro. Curry. Yes, ah, oh, is correct. I remember Too many one cute thing. little animals. <laughs> Too many mascot characters. <laughs> um, Kiro, yeah. Yeah. It's uh yeah, it's boring. Like it's it is actually really boring. And as you said, like Himawari is fractionally better, but she gets sidelined I don't wanna say pretty quickly, but like at one point in the series they just have to write her out because of the whole situation. Like, well you'll never see this character ever again. <laughs> and you're like, Oh, Okay. Well, well okay. <laughs> we need to have our OTP. They need to be the <laughs> only options for each other. <laughs> the only options. Their like, relationship no, is... No, my bisexuality. <laughs> <laughs> Their relationship is so strong, Ray, that you can't have the main character even meet another person. Yeah. Lest... Lest their relationship be in some <laughs> way threatened. <laughs> That's... Yeah, they're fated lovers. They're fated lovers. They were destined for each other before birth, G. Mm. So if mm. they even lay eyes on a single other human being at any point ever, <laughs> they're gonna forget about each other immediately. <laughs> Maybe the Ray Earth girls are more capable. Yeah. Like, they are. I just don't really remember anything about that series, and I found it pretty boring. But, again, that's a yeah. me problem. Um, like, again, it's like you can probably find exceptions to a lot of these things throughout their bibliography just because it's so huge. Mm -hmm. But I think it's still worth, like, pointing out these sort of trends in their work mm -hmm. that show up across quite a few different series. Um... Especially because, like, I know people talk about the age gap stuff a lot, but I don't see people talking about the female characters that much, or, like, yeah. how <laughs> gender essentialist their BL tends to be. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, on that note, uh, the second part of At Sunlit Lake's question is, if you were to recommend something to a newbie, where should they start? What do you think, G? I don't want to say, like, again, I'm in incredibly biased. I think that Hulk is their best work. That's another question we get later. I straight up just think that Hulk is their best work. I don't think... I think it stands on its own pretty well for the most part. Um, if you were wanting to get into some of their more classic like, well-known titles. Not that Hulk isn't that. Um, and a lot of people have a lot of love for X. I feel like that might be a good starting point, especially if you're wanting something a bit moodier, a bit um, dramatic, uh, more action-focused, and something that isn't um, too tied to the, the overall, like, crossover universe stuff then that might be a good... It, it's a little bit harder to find now, though, so I, I feel bad recommending it. And if you mm -hmm. are wanting to try Card Capture Sakura, I think it is it is worth reading with the caveat of oh, acknowledging that there's a lot of issues there. Like, don't go into it completely blind mm -hmm. on those things. Yeah, and... That, uh at Sunlit Lake even says, despite how much I adore Cardcaptor Sakura, I just find I can't recommend it to people these days due to all the age gaps. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, like, if, if you are a more informed manga fan and you've heard the discourse and you're aware of it and you're like, well, like, I'll just regard that as, like, part of the larger thing. I still want to read this. Then absolutely go. I don't think there's an issue with that. Um, I do think that, and again, this is my bias showing, I do think that Clear Card is a completely unnecessary sequel, um, and I don't think it's, it's 
contributed much to to what you need to enjoy to enjoy uh, card capture sakura um yeah my vote would be probably this is the weird because i haven't even read it but like x i think <laughs> x is probably your best bet um and again with the caveat that it's unfinished like you we're not going to get an ending yeah. for that um yeah it's so fucking hard <laughs> that's a hard question to answer yeah i agree with holic i think again it gets messy part of the way through with the tsubasa stuff but it kind of goes back into its own thing after that mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so with the caveat that there's part of the series you're just gonna be like frustrated and confused for no reason mm -hmm. um you know it is a good series that i think for the most part except for that part where it gets too bogged down with Tsubasa. <laughs> um i can recommend it on its own i would also mm -hmm. say um wish is inoffensive it's mm -hmm. sweet bit melancholy and it's short so <laughs> yeah <laughs> um you know and it, it's got the queerness without all the i don't remember any weird age gap maybe i'm forgetting something <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's probably there it's probably somewhere the central romance is fine <laughs> and mm. queer so there you go <laughs> um <laughs> uh yeah i guess those would be my my choices wish and mm. um holic so, like, mm -hmm. I feel like there's more interesting series that I've read from them, but they're also not series that I would recommend yeah. <laughs> overall because they've got so mm. much shit. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So, sort of related to what we've been talking about, um, mm. at Subaru Zukamori uh, says... Thoughts on LGBTQIA plus aspects in Clamp's work, portrayals and storylines versus art, and in particular how the gender spectrum is depicted. So this is a lot of what I was talking about with how the male-male and male-non-binary relationships within Clamp tend to be extremely gendered. And yes, by that I yeah. mean like male-female coded. Um, yes. Which was very much how BL was in the 90s and the The standard aughts. of the age, yeah. Um, but it's like, their series, even going like into the 2010s, are still like this. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, it's like, I don't know. I know that a lot of these like gay relationships, especially in like Cardcaptor Sakura and stuff, for me, like Tsubasa, Kurogane, and Fai, that was like back when I was, you know, Catholic and homophobic or whatever in high school. Mm. Like, that was one of my first times seeing a gay couple portrayed in any of my media, and one of the first mm -hmm. times that I ended up really gunning for their relationship. So, you know, I get it. Like, it's nostalgic for mm -hmm. me, too. Um, mm -hmm. And I still have a lot of fondness for them. And I still have a lot of fondness for Watanuki and Domeki. Um, but, like, I think we've kind of grown past where Clamp is in terms of that stuff. Yes, yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at with it. Mm -hmm. I completely agree. As I mean, we, we spoke about it already at length, but Clamp's queer relationships were very of the era that they started in, especially within the doujin scene. It was fairly standard, it, and it's been across their works since their first quote-unquote professional series, Rig Veda. Um, and it's, it, their series and relationships that mean a lot of, uh, mean a lot to a lot of people. Um, whether those people be in the LGBT umbrella themselves or just ha not having any kind of background or exposure to positively portrayed gay 
umbrella term gay relationships, right? Mm -hmm. And that's a very powerful and positive thing. It was a, a wonderful sign or a wonderful thing for that that um, availability to be there and a, in a widespread um, mainstream series as well, right? Mm -hmm. Like these are, whether it was, you know, uh, Kurugana and Fai in Subasa because that was like the hit series during that 2008-ish to mm -hmm. 2012 period, um, or whether you're a younger fan who enjoyed um, the characters in Card Captor Sakura, that being kind of your first exposure to a gay relationship. All of those things are good. Those are all mm -hmm. good things that have had positive impact on a whole bunch of people, I'm sure, in Japan just as much as outside of it. But, <laughs> but as you said, current 2023 era media even mainstream stuff, stuff that isn't, you know, relegated to BL or Yuri or even just, you know, um, LGBT manga. The <laughs> queer characters, queer relationships, positive portrayals of those things, the diversity of relationships, um, the diversity of identity, is so much better than it was in 2005, 2008, which is good. Mm -hmm. It means we're on a positive upward trend, right? Yeah, and um, like we still got a long way to go, but like... Exactly. You know. But the fact that, you know, stuff like Blue Period can have characters outside of the gender binary mm -hmm. that are, you know, have a anime adaptation, are wildly successful, um, the the fact that Yuki Kamatani's series just continue to get queerer and queerer and they are perfectly happy and fine doing whatever they're doing. Um, the fact that some of the most uh, highly regarded mangaka in, in like creating stuff um, across the board aren't afraid to introduce characters that don't fit the cis like cishet normativity of what is expected mm -hmm. um for shonen or shoujo or jose or whatever the case may be um uh, we're in a very different place in representation in anime and manga um if you are a young queer person or not if you're a young person looking for better representation it, or just any kind of if you're reading a story and there is representation in that media of a queer relationship or a queer character more often than not it is a better portrayal of the that that aspect than you will find in clamp um that's just because now we are in a much different place societally and I think as in the social awareness. Um, and also we have so many more queer creators making these stories, writing these stories. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, yeah. I, I think if, you're, if you are someone scrambling for uh, whether it be non-binary representation, whether it be gay or lesbian or bisexual relationships, um, there's there's so much better you can do than clamp and it's not it's not something that's aged with society um it hasn't grown up in the same way that we expect now from a lot of our media including manga mm -hmm. yeah i am in agreement <laughs> <laughs> okay um Next, uh, we have a couple questions regarding Clamp's art style from at Catfishing Words. Mm -hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on their visual style shift over the years? And do you have a particular favorite uh, re-art style and aesthetic choices? So like we said, there's a 
few different like major eras in clamp artwork. Um, mm -hmm. there's sort of the like '90s Tokyo Babylon X, like uh, Ray Earth, that kind of like triangle torso, yes, knife yeah. eyelash kind of <laughs> style um there is sort of the cute um style that you see in like card captor sakura or angelic layer um or kobato um mm -hmm. and then within that i'd also put the sort of weird transitionary st style that uh chobits inhabits um mm -hmm. And then we have our beloved noodle people <laughs> in uh, <laughs> Holic and Tsubasa. So I think those are the main ones that people talk about or are familiar with. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have a particular favorite? Uh, we've already spoken about it. Holic, just style-wise, is phenomenal you you made note of the woodblock printing kind of aspect of it how it captures the whole atmosphere of that series i think pr really helps that series mm -hmm. a lot um i also in although it is of that 90s kind of uh triangle torso era <laughs> That's also similarly why I am more fond of stuff like X and Tokyo Babylon. The the high the use of like blacks, very high mm. contrast, um, is very like personally to my aesthetic, it's what I enjoy a lot about that style of art from them. Um I when I comparatively a lot of the very saccharine, sweet, cute stuff I am not relatively a fan of. I find it um, very, very... Uh, yeah, there's just a lot going on. Um, even if nothing's being said, it can be just a lot visually, very highly detailed, which isn't inherently wrong, but I I find it kind of comp overcomplicates mm -hmm. yeah. something. Um, that might otherwise be just as beautiful, a little bit more simplified. And the use of, you know, screen tones and things like that can just make it overwhelming. Um, and in a similar sense, like clovers like that, although that does have a lot of high contrast art, I find it not as visually interesting as something like Pollock. Um, I can't speak to Chobit's obviously um and i'm i'm not that familiar with the artwork of stuff like um well i am familiar with subasa's artwork because holy crap that sure is a fan favorite on tumblr.com uh, <laughs> there's a lot of uh very uh beautiful very extra spreads in subasa yes <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's like, okay, I'm aware of it. And it's perfect for your sense. 2016 um, aesthetic vlog. Exactly. Right. Like it is very much that. Um, and so, yeah, I, I find their darker, more moody, atmospheric stuff, stuff that isn't overwhelmingly. I, and I don't want to say that because Holix does have a huge, high level amount of detail. It just doesn't feel like there's 37, like, sparkly, wispy <laughs> things happening. Um, and I'm I'm not sure whether that's actually meant to be happening, if it's just meant to be atmosphere on the page, if it's meant mm -hmm. to represent. I'm just like, oh, I'm just... There's just, just no rhyme or reason me, to it. Just tell me what's going on, please. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I am... I don't want to say simple is better, because it's not, but I do like it more when they rely more on inks versus a screen tone, I mm -hmm. think might be just the, where it comes down to yeah. for me. Um, 
And yeah, in a similar sense, that's why drag and drop is a little bit more interesting uh, visually to me as well. Um, it's also less convoluted than all the other stuff. Um, but yeah, like I, I've I found it very hard to follow the action in um, Magic Knight Ray Earth. I found a very hard to follow the action in Card Capture Sakura. I found it uh, impossible to figure out anything about what was going on in Rig Veda. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, that one is mm -hmm. just incomprehensible in, <laughs> incomprehensible uh clover we've already talked enough smack about already but you know any of their action oriented s sequences um can get lost and confusing with their higher detailed art approach that they so often use which is why mm -hmm. i get confused and lost um yeah so, yeah just <laughs> that's <laughs> and again i really love a lot of like high detail super maximalist artists it's just mm -hmm. i don't frankly i don't think they're very good like comic artists yes <laughs> yeah uh and, you know, I'm sure many in our audience would disagree, and that's fine. Um, but yeah, you know, again, I feel the same way about One Piece and Ichiro Oda, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I do think Clamp's art is prettier than One Piece's art. But... <laughs> yeah, well, I, I just think of stuff like Witch Hat Atelier, right, which yeah. has... Gore just spreads a huge amount of very fine detail work mm -hmm. and a lot of action and it's never once been confusing i'm never lost on the page never um, it it's is, so clear it is, it's just there's so much embellishment in that as well where it's yes. like you know there's all these little like swoopy swirly magical details and like stars and bubbles and flowers and like mm -hmm. extra little borders but it doesn't affect the readability if anything it makes it even more readable so. yeah and i think it it reflects the previous experience uh that shirahama has had with western comic like just comics she she has existed within the comic space for a very long time you can un you can see how well shirahama knows how to put together a sequence of panels <laughs> to yeah. display action happening mm -hmm. um it's just so much more of a fulfilling experience reading something like witch hat atelier um, especially when they do get, you know, into more action or, um, you know, conflict, uh, situations, you're never like, who's that character? What's going on? Where, how, where did they come from? Were they in the scene the whole time? Like, you know, what's going on at any point. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's not, it doesn't feel like a jumbling of still frames mm -hmm. trying to piece together or imply a larger element of movement um which i feel like clamp is very good at those still frames right they mm -hmm. they have a particular image and they it, they go all out it's gorgeous it'll have every embellishment in the world on it and you and you look at it and you go that's so beautiful that has so much going on look at all of the detailed flowers and pearls and and sunlight sparkling off of everything mm -hmm. that would be a phenomenal gallery piece mm -hmm. but when you are making a comic with uh, hundreds of gallery pieces and not a huge amount connecting them aside from contextually being told what's happening there might be a sound effect every so often <laughs> um it's a lot harder to follow they don't it doesn't seem like they have the sequential training or at least some of the members don't 
feel like they have the sequential training that we've seen with other artists who do highly detailed artwork, who do have a variety of types of series that they do, um, who have a very um, maximalist style. Yeah, mm. it's a... Uh, <laughs> it's... Yeah, um, that that's mm -hmm. my take on it. <laughs> yeah, um, I think Shirahama is like a perfect like comparison point to draw I was thinking of like Inosan um mm -hmm. you know Sakamoto being a very just lush beautiful maximalist artist um mm -hmm. thinking about like Kamatani or Hagio mm -hmm. are also mm -hmm. very maximalist throw everything at the panel and see what sticks mm -hmm. um both of them in particular have a tendency to just or go panels all together. Um, yeah. <laughs> but when there's something that you need to know is happening, in general, you know that it's happening. Even if, mm -hmm. you know, particularly in Hagio's case, you're going for this very, like, dreamlike, bizarre, surreal, out-of-space-and-time mm -hmm. experience. Like, mm -hmm. when you need to know something, you know it. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, you know, if we're talking about clones, <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, does Hagio love her clones. Um, mm -hmm. I don't care if you've got clones, as long as you've got yeah. something interesting to say with them. <laughs> yeah. In a, in a similar sense, or like, again, highly detailed artwork, lots of action, um, not a series that we mention a lot on this on the podcast but is phenomenally and hugely popular is berserk right mm -hmm. like berserk is so well known for almost infamously so for mira's highly detailed artwork um in every single panel that he mm -hmm. ever put together um it's just but you never were like well what's happening like <laughs> There was so many big sword fights in that series. There is so many big sword fights in that series. Um, and But you're never lost as to, like, who, where someone is, what, where the action is coming from. Um, who's fighting who? Who's fighting <laughs> who? Um, it's just a very, yeah, there, there's ways to do this kind of, uh style of story and comic and clamp is much more focused on aesthetic than readability maybe mm -hmm. is the takeaway yeah yeah when really if you're gonna do like comic books and not picture books mm -hmm. you really need both you need yeah. both mm-hmm you need both. You can't have one or the other. You have to have both. <laughs> um, but in terms of, like, my favorite style, uh, I agree with G that Holic, I think, is... I mean, I said it before, I think it's their most successful artistic endeavor. Just mm -hmm. overall. Um, I find that one the easiest to read. Um, it's... I, in terms of character design, maybe because I started there, maybe because I just like lanky, wispy, pretty shoujo manga style, <laughs> I do tend towards the more, like, noodle people type of, like, character mm -hmm. designs that they do, um, and I think that those are employed most successfully in Holic. Um, there's less noise going on there yeah. than in Tsubasa for sure um it just feels like overall there is a very strong artistic vision for what they wanted the mm -hmm. series to look like um uh otherwise I find a lot of their older stuff like in the the triangle torso I guess style mm -hmm. to be just even more baffling to read from one <laughs> panel to the next so yeah like it feels even more amateurish than i feel like 
their more recent mm-hmm. stuff is. So for that reason, I can't necessarily say that I prefer it, even if it is less crowded, um, because I don't find it any easier to read than Supasa. Mm-hmm. Um, probably, other than Holic, the easiest series for me to read uh, was Chobits, um, mm-hmm. which has a much more, I guess mainstream conventional type of style to it it's definitely playing into the whole like moe trend of the time um Mm -hmm. and it's just it's easy to read that series i find easy to read um there's not too much going on there's not too many fucking characters (laughs) um (laughs) and for the most part i can tell people apart so uh And I think the the girls are cute, and I think the main guy's cute, so, you know, that's worth something, I guess. (laughs) She gets to wear lots of pretty dresses. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. Freya. But, yeah, so. I guess. (laughs) Chobits. Yeah. See, the thing is, I feel like Clamp, if they had gone, rather than being a dojinka group that focused on like comics right if they Mm -hmm. had just done like comic style or you know manga style fashion books yes fashion pictures yes they that's their niche that's their niche they can they've got some phenomenal outfits sakura has worn everything under the sun Mm -hmm. um and if they ever put out a fashion focused picture book quote-unquote art book that it would sell a bajillion copies it (laughs) wouldn't even have to be any of their characters in that because they have such a strong sense of style everything Mm -hmm. from you know lolita to this more shiny styling to all everything in between um i was gonna say like that how mm -hmm. how many sweet and gothic lolitas over the years have based their style off of chi or freya yeah exactly (laughs) exactly so it's like that that is their niche that is where their success is and if that was all that they ever did i would have no issue nothing but praise i'd say They are phenomenal artists that know what they like to do, that know what they want to put out into into the world. Instead, they decided to do universe jumping and clones. Um, (laughs) They chose violence. (laughs) They chose violence and age gaps, and so I must comment on it. Um, (laughs) Yeah, it's... For all of the, the, you know, negatives that I've said... There's a million Clamp fans out there that love their work for those aspects, right? Like, this is a very personal opinion and preference. Um, Mm -hmm. But I do think that, like, I can understand why people get tattoos of their characters because they have a whole bunch of pretty artwork. Or, you know, they put color printouts or posters or whatever, of the characters on their walls. They're beautiful. They are fantastic artists. It's just not as great when it's in a comic. Um, (laughs) So. Yep. Uh, Our last two questions are good places to wrap up, I think. Mm -hmm. First with the negative, so we can get it out of the way. Uh, (laughs) At Rin Reads Manga asks us, what's our least favorite Clamp series? Uh, of everything that I've read, um, which is more than, like, I've given them a fair shot, I feel. Like, I've, yeah. but of everything that I've read, my least favorite is fucking Kobato. I just didn't <laughs> vibe with that series at all. Um, it's kind of funny because that series, the anime at least, not the manga, um, was what inspired one of my very good friends from high school to go into early childhood, 
like <laughs> teaching mm-hmm. um and she and she's like oh yeah it's such a lovely series and blah, blah blah and then yeah over the covid break when i read all six volumes from my library i was like this is the worst thing i've ever read it's not the <laughs> worst thing i've ever read but i didn't like it from the very first chapter and i had all six volumes booked out so I powered through them and then it ended the way it did and I was like well I like it even less now um, <laughs> it's yeah again it it falls into that uber saccharin um I also not like a huge fan of their ditzy female leads mm-hmm. um Sakura from Cardcaptor well Sakura in every iteration is kind of like this as well um, she gets a pass because she's like twelve in card capture <laughs> Sakura. So like I'll let younger than that, ten. She she'll get a pass, but the Komato, oh my god, I just wanted to strangle her half the time and then <laughs> bang my head against the wall the other half of the time. Um and so yeah, that's my least favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Um, I read part of Kobato and I was just bored, so, Mm -hmm. uh, let's see, well, my least favorite, I was the most bored reading Clover. Yeah. That was a deeply boring experience. That's what I was gonna say, is like, I've disliked Kobato the most, the most bored I've ever been reading clamp was clover (laughs) it's just not a good Um, time (laughs) but it's also not that long so Mm, mm. uh and it didn't offend me now something that offended me (laughs) (laughs) and it didn't when i was a kid so this is like a complete 180 in terms of my enjoyment factor because Mm. i really did love chobits once upon Mm a yesteryear. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, I loved it. I read it a few different times. I've read a couple different editions of it. I've seen Mm. the anime. I still to this day get the anime's theme song periodically stuck in my head. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I, yeah, it was part of my clamp phase. I loved it. Mm. Looking back, gross. So gross. Yeah. So, so gross. Um, I liked the, because I, you know, fancied myself a 14-year-old genius or whatever. You know, I, I liked the <laughs> little 12-year-old or 13-year-old genius. But his whole yeah. thing is that, like, he misses his sister, so he made her mm-hmm. as a fembot, and he dresses her in mm-hmm. sexy maid outfits and orders her around. <laughs> And I'm like, why did you think this was a good idea? I get that you think that, like, sexy maid outfits are cute and you want to draw a lot of them. But Mm. um, can we not, like, put a character who wears outfits like that because she likes them into your series? Mm. Just throw Mm. Mine from Fruits Basket into your series? Does it matter? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You could have done anything. (laughs) <laughs> and especially if this character is meant to be a sister like it's his figure. sister yeah yeah like it, it would make it would make fractionally more sense if this was like a university student who is struggling with the recent death of his girlfriend or something yeah right like it's still weird but, make, but it's it'd be not, weird it's but it'd be a weird. little more but no first of all he's 12 and second of all that's his literal sister that he like copied mm. like she's supposed to look exactly like her mm. um and yeah uh also of course the infamous uh we all know where cheese on switch is mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so funny um what a funny joke mm-hmm. that he has to grope her without her consent to turn her on. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's just, like, every piece of lore about these Persicoms makes me hate the creator of Persicoms so much more. (laughs) And I think he's supposed to be the same guy who created Angelic Lair, which is kind of hilarious. Um, Mm -hmm. It's, 
you know, the main guy is supposed to be, like, innocuous and nice and, like, not that into this stuff, but it's, like, mm-hmm. he ends up being really creepy <laughs> uh, because, like, he ends up with his computer who, mm-hmm. as I already mentioned, in the end, the big revelation of the series is that she's just a brick. Like, Mm -hmm. she doesn't learn, she doesn't feel, she's a calculator. (laughs) You know? Yeah. And she acts like a baby, and it's really weird and annoying. Um, Mm -hmm. Which, you know, Moe is, that was, that sure was a whole era. (laughs) But but it's just, in hindsight, everything about it is wrong. And I feel weird. But I used to like it so much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I like the art in it, though. It's, it's pretty art. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so finishing on an actually positive note, I think both <laughs> of our answer is the same for yes. our final question, uh, which is from at C. Edwards. 0527. What is your favorite clamp series? You want to say it on 3G? <laughs> sure. One, One, two, two three. three. Holic. Holic. <laughs> <laughs> it's Holic. It's Holic. We, it's no secret. We only said it about 15 times already, but like, <laughs> it is actually really good. Mm-hmm. The the balance between the mystery kind of supernatural elements with uh, the character's day-to-day life and Mm -hmm. issues I think is really well done. I think a lot of the side characters are really interesting, not just uh, Domaki and Himawari, but like the spider, the girl. Mm -hmm. Like there's a bunch of like little recurring characters that aren't, the same as like Dolmaki, who is almost in of himself a main character, um, mm-hmm. but they're all very strong. Yuko's a great, just she's just a fun character to read about. Wanuki yeah. is really like he's a really strong character. I feel he's got a gr- a lot of personality, um, yeah. and the I love his again, uh, his... his growth over mm-hmm. time, and I love Dolmaki's growth yes. over time. Yeah, and so it's, it's, I think as we've alluded to and said a lot of times, it's the most complete um, series, especially for this late in Clamp's catalogue, when so much of their stuff was being pulled into Tsubasa and this wider, like, crossover universe. Mm -hmm. Um, It still stands on its own really, really well. Um, for, yeah, for the most part, caveats to that, but, like, (laughs) it's one volume out of the original 19 that you might be a bit confused on, um, and I, I think as well the sequel is well done. Uh, Compared Mm -hmm. to Cardcaptor Sakura, where I could not give less (laughs) of a crap what is how and I've read six volumes of that as well it's not like I was just like oh this is gonna be bad because it's mm-hmm. new no I try I gave it a fair there's no reason it needs to be one longer than the original two exist at all um aside from nostalgia and clamp needed money they haven't had a hit in a while um <laughs> I do think that Ray is a, a solid follow up to the end of the original series. I do hope mm-hmm. that at some at some point they return to it. I they I think they've alluded to and said that they will once Clear Card is over. That would be nice. Um, I just also don't want them to mess it up. <laughs> like that's my <laughs> biggest fear is them returning to Holic and then just start doing their stuff what they (laughs) what what they seem to do for um a lot of their more recent series especially um as it is ray has been on hiatus for at least 10 years a long time Mm. um so 
So, yeah, Hulk is just, for me, it has the best cast of characters in so far as personal growth, in so far as relatability, I think, as well. It doesn't end up too bogged down in the supernatural stuff. I think there's a lot of human mm. elements to it that, like, obviously are involved with, like, supernatural weird stuff, but, like... Yeah. The emotions there are very human. Um, yeah, and I think and... that's what ends up making mm. the the gay elements and the romance in it, for me, the most affecting out of yeah. any clamp that I've read. I am, mm-hmm. like, consistently um, invested in Watanuki and Domeki's relationship. Um, mm mm-hmm. It's not drawn out as explicitly as some of their earlier stuff, which is a bit annoying, yeah. but whatever. Um, they're in love. They they smooch. <laughs> they just do it off screen. Um, <laughs> we all know it. Um, <laughs> but it's just, you know, they've got the whole, like, supernatural faded lovers thing going on, but I feel like there's like, a core of them vibing as people underneath all that, um, which makes it easier to relate to and be invested in their relationship as two characters, so. The other thing that Hulk doesn't have, or at least not that I remember, it doesn't have any freaking age gaps, um, (laughs) In any of the major romances, or even the side romances, I think everyone is fairly age-appropriate for each other, um, which is a breath of fresh air in Hola- or in Clamp universe. Um, yeah. I don't have to say, okay, it's really good, but also there is, there is a relationship between a 10-year-old and a 37-year-old. <laughs> Just for you to be aware of. Like, there's... <laughs> there's none of that in Hollick. If there is, I blocked it out successfully, but I didn't <laughs> read it that long ago, so I don't think there is. Uh, yep. And that's Clamp. <laughs> that's Clamp. That's Clamp. Um, thank you, everyone, for all of your wonderful questions. Uh, I'm sure plenty of what we've said has... It's probably got some people's uh, ackles up. This it, <laughs> I don't think that anything we've said is too controversial or at least unfamiliar. Um, they're pretty familiar criticisms for yeah, yeah, discourse around clamp. I think fans are already aware of the wild variations of opinions on this, um, and also yeah. I think a lot of clamp fans who yeah were fans of them in their teen years when revisiting a lot of the stuff that they love are like oh oh my god oh my god Mm. what Mm. i read this as a 12 year old what the oh um i think so yeah you Mm -hmm. know with stuff like the age gaps or you know some of the gender stuff that we've been talking about you know it's always important Mm -hmm. to engage with your art critically um Mm -hmm. but also like you know I want to just reiterate that if you're someone who really loves Clamp, who Mm. sees a lot more value in their stuff than we do, that is so great. We are happy Mm -hmm. for you. Um, I like plenty of series and stuff that are on the controversial side. So does G. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes. Yeah. And, you know, love what you love and don't love Mm -hmm. what you don't love. And that's cool. Mm -hmm. And... We hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> you are not incorrect for enjoying something that has issues. You are not, mm-hmm. you know, a bad person if you're a fan of Clamp, nor would we ever say that you are. And if you are, love their series, if you just continue onwards in your life as a Clamp fan, regardless of all of the, you know, people who say that they're bad or that they're not worth reading or whatever. The only reason they're popular is because of nostalgia. (laughs) Just be happy and enjoy the things that you love because that's really what we're all about here on this podcast. Don't worry. 
be happy. <laughs> exactly. If you're not yeah. hurting, any, hurting anyone, just keep being you. Same mm-hmm. disclaimer as our Junji Ito episode, which is also like, yes, you know, we just we want to throw in some uh, less than positive opinions into the mix of our mm-hmm. many years of podcasting uh, for variation. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. If we just talked about things that we loved, I mean, it would certainly be easier. But um, in saying that, I do like having a more mixed bag of a podcast episode mm-hmm. like this one. Um, and as for Clamp, the, the group themselves, they are uber popular even now they are so so uh successful wealthy i'm sure um that you know us us idiots on a podcast aren't aren't taking any of that away from them and it's fantastic that they have had such a long and successful career um doing presumably what they love so yeah for all of the gripes and uh, you know issues that we may have, they're they're just putting out their their art into the world, and it is imperfect art. But you know, isn't that what being an artist is all about? Just <laughs> making what you love um, and leaving it for the world to decide whether to <laughs> latch on to <laughs> it to or think not. Of it. Yep. Exactly. And people have. And good for them. Yes. <laughs> so much so. Um, but thank you everyone who sent in your questions. There was a lot of them. Hopefully we answered them all to uh, your satisfaction. Obviously we we couldn't speak to every clamp series that's ever been released. Uh, we certainly don't have the time. I don't have the energy. <laughs> I don't know about <laughs> you, right? But it, it would have been three times as long and probably not nearly as interesting um (laughs) next month is april uh and we're doing something a little bit different uh something i'm very excited about um we are doing the first episode of what ray has very affectionately called g's light novel corner um, in saying that, this is not a light novel, but it is a novel of a variety. We will be talking about the smash hit popular Danne mm-hmm. uh, series, currently available in English from Seven Seas, Heaven Officials Blessing by MXTX. Uh, yes, this is actually talk- my mm-hmm. first foray into Danne at all. So that's exciting. Uh, G is much more uh, well-read and aware than I am. I am a novice, which is often how I come into these things. (laughs) Uh, For once, I have more (laughs) knowledge on something. I may not be able to read Japanese. I sure as hell can't read Chinese. (laughs) Neither can I. I do know some (laughs) stuff. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so if you have any questions for us regarding heaven officials blessing aka uh, Tianguan Sifu, uh let us know leave any comments or questions for us either in the descript or the comment section at youtube or on twitter just reply to us once i put out the call for questions uh that always seems to work pretty well uh, I'm stealing the call to action from G. Uh, whatever platform you happen to be watching this podcast on, if you enjoyed it, uh, we would love it if you would just pop a rating on there or a like or whatever the uh, apparatus is where you're watching. Uh, it really would help us out. Yes, it's a little thing, but um, it means a lot. And I... Oh. Oh, right, I didn't tell you, but Anchor FM has switched to uh, podcast Spotify for podcasters now. Mm-hmm. There are 91 people following us on Spotify, which is an <laughs> amazing number to know about. Because um, I Let's presumed it was three, and one of, yeah. two of those were you and me. So, <laughs> 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 you know, it's 
we really do appreciate everyone who listens, everyone who engages with us, anyone who asks questions. Um, and hopefully you guys all enjoy it. Um, and so those likes, those ratings, those reviews, um, are just a small way we would really appreciate, um, if you could do. Uh, but yes, thank you all so, so much for listening. As always, I am G. You can follow me on YouTube at Simply G or on Twitter at g that's g double e underscore reads you can also find ray on social medias uh as, she's on youtube as whimsical pictures she's also on twitter at whimsical pics that's p-i-x uh, all one word um is there anything else we need to plug i don't think so <laughs> nope <laughs> no so thank you guys so much so much for listening i will see you in the next episode Bye till then. Bye guys.